Ah, looks like um, looks like I'm back on. Excellent. Says it's poor, poor connection. Happy Saturday, everyone. I wanted to come on and do a, a reasonably quick, I think, live video and talk to you about how messy action beats in action all day, every day, in life and in business. It's something that's been on my mind lately and it's come up working with clients privately last week. Uh, hi mom, uh, my biggest supporter, that's amazing. Uh, see if anyone else is able to join in live. I've just did the same video on my Latvian Instagram page at the B Tribe Latvia. Uh, so you can listen to this in Latvian language if you prefer, if you are like me from Latvia. So yes, so messy action beats in action all day, every day. Or another saying that I absolutely stand by is that you don't have to be great to start but you do have to start to become great, 100%. What I see in health and weight loss is that we wait for the perfect circumstances all the time. We can't be too busy at work, we can't have too much going on with children, so our children can't be sick, uh, we can't be poorly ourselves, we can't have any other problems, we've got to make sure that all the foods and meals are 100% prepared and we're going to do the exercises every single day. We want everything to be perfect. And as soon as we realize <laughs> something that we already, already know, the life is imperfect and it's in, in, unpredictable and something happens at work or at home, you've got your children are sick, your husband is poorly, um, something else happens, you realize that you've forgotten to pick up some healthy foods from the shop or you're too tired to exercise in the evening. We just stop. We throw in the towel quite quickly. And then what we do is we think, I'm going to come back to this when the circumstances are right, when the time is right. Let me tell you, the time and the circumstances will never be right. The best time to do this was probably yesterday. So the next best time is now. And now is well and truly all that you have and all that you have control over. Yesterday has happened. Tomorrow hasn't happened yet. All you can well and truly do is concentrate on today, on what's in front of you and what can I do today. And I do see this a lot. And in, when we start doing these weight loss programs or fitness programs, instead of um, starting on doing something and realizing this is never going to work for me long term, how can I pivot? What can I learn from this? How can I adjust this to make sure that this is going to work for me, my personality, my preferences, my lifestyle and my budget? Instead, we try to fit in into somebody else's shoes. So for example, let's say you have joined a weight loss program, program and you've got a meal plan, which means that every single day there's a new meal that you need to prepare, let's say for dinner, and it does say that it's only three to five ingredients and it will take you 10 to 15 minutes. Fine, that doesn't sound too complicated. I can do that. But then when you start doing that and you realize I'm not the kind of person to cook every single night. It's not going to be something that's going to be sustainable for me and my family. So instead of thinking, how could I change this to make this work? What we do instead is we put a pause on it and say, well, this is not the right time for me to be cooking every single night because I've got stuff going on at work. I've got things in my private life. And I've, you know, I've got a cold coming on. It's not the right time. I'll come back to it when the time is right and when the circumstances are right. And we just keep going around these circles instead of listening to ourselves. So a perfect example here would be cooking for me seven days a week is never going to work. But what I could do is I could cook every other night or I could cook twice a week. And I could take two of those recipes and I could make a really big batch cook 
divide it into meals and freeze some. To give you an example, the same goes for exercise. You join a weight loss program, uh, sorry, a fitness program where the trainer tells you you've got to go running every single morning and you better be up early and even better, you know, do that on empty stomach. Well, it's great for those people who are early birds and they like to be up early, they don't eat breakfast, it's perfect for them. But if you're a night owl and it really goes against your body clock to get up, I call it stupid o'clock, yet super early every morning, and you always have breakfast and now you're being told go and run on an empty stomach. Maybe you'll be able to do it for a week or you know however long the program is, but you know deep down in yourself that you're not going to be able to do it for a lifetime, for the rest of your life. So there is very little point. So you then need to think, I can't do that, that is really not for me. But what I can do is I can go for a walk after work or I can go to a Zumba class or I like swimming. Maybe I'll do that twice a week. And what I see is that we compare things like to like. For example, this meal has got less calories than that meal and this exercise burns more calories than that exercise. So we're very much focusing on intensity over consistency. But it's the consistency. So it's no good if you follow that diet plan for a week or two and you go back to eating how you were before. It's no good if you go running for two weeks straight and then you don't run for six months. What you want is to have some sort of consistency. So eating 500 calories for three days a week and then binge eating for the rest of the week, think about where you're gonna be at the end of the week or end of the month. Now think about those high intensity workouts. If you do them once a week or once in fortnight, like my husband did very recently with running, comparing to walking every other day or doing some sort of other exercise that you enjoy, think how many calories you will burn and how many calories you will save with eating at the end of the week, at the end of the month. Don't compare like to like. Think of long term, think of consistency. And this is where we wait for everything to be perfect. And then we want, you know, the perfect timing, the perfect circumstances. And we are trying to fit in into somebody else's shoes. But if you are a size six, you could probably fit into size five shoes for a little while. It'd be pretty uncomfortable. I have done it. <laughs> I'm a size six or 39. European, you can wear 38 or 5, size 5, but not for a very long time. You will get to a point when you have blisters, when your feet are screaming, enough is enough, and you'll go and put the old shoes back on. So this is what you're trying to avoid doing. We've got to think what's going to work for me, number one, and what is it that I, go, I can focus on doing long term, consistency over intensity. Now, let's talk about business here as well. Oh, actually, before I go on to business, let me give you a real life example. Um, so I used the running example and the walking, and that's uh, from real life. I myself used to do a high intensity cardio. I used to do a heavy weights lifting. So being there, done all those things, um, and you know, pretty hardcore five, six times a week. But I've realized I really wasn't enjoying it and I was going against my body. And when I swapped that for walking, for Pilates, for yoga, I soon realized I started do doing those things because I enjoy doing them. One of the things I love about walking, I just love breathing in the morning air. I love, especially springtime, hearing the birds. I love the kind of misty smell you sometimes get from the forest. It gets all my senses going and I get so much more from it than the number of steps or the calories that I've burned. The same with like something like yoga. I probably enjoy the mindfulness side of the things more than the actual exercise. 
and then I find I want to do those things, if anything, for my mental health, for my emotional well-being, rather than the exercise. So you really need to look at what you're going to benefit long term. And sometimes I used to go line dancing with my mother-in-law and because we really used to enjoy doing it, I never even thought of it as exercise because I didn't think, oh, I'm going to go exercise now, I'm going to go and burn calories now. I just used to look at it, oh, I've got something enjoyable that I do on a, on a, on a Tuesday afternoon. Hopefully you get the idea. Uh, when it comes to eating, uh, at the beginning when I started doing my weight loss programs, I had a client um, who was a, a difficult case, shall we say, and I knew that uh, for her going from having uh, eating out, having a lot of takeaways, drinking a lot of alcohol, to go completely, you know, salads, smoothies, soups, it's not really going to work for her or she could only do it short term. So instead of suggesting that she changes the way she eats overnight, 360 degrees, what I did with her is I changed one meal a day and that was her breakfast. For the, so for the two weeks that she stayed with me in, her, in my program, she had a very healthy breakfast and she kept up with the takeaways and she was still drinking wine in the evenings. But at the end of the two weeks, and I was actually surprised, very presently surprised, that she lost a couple of pounds. And you see, that was realistic for her. And by the end of two weeks, she was really used to having this breakfast. And then she could look at, well, what else could I change? Now that I'm comfortable with this small change that I've made, what else can I change? And that's the way to do it. Uh, one of the... Um, hi, Vinita again. <laughs> it's always nice to listen to things in different languages, isn't it? And I suppose I, I say uh, probably different things in my videos as well. So, ha so happy to see you again. You know, it's uh, the biggest compliment when people want to listen to you more. I really appreciate it. So, yeah, so it's, you know, when I was losing weight, I had this... Um, rut that I got into, that I wanted to eat healthily and then I decided that I was going to do fasting, intermittent fasting. Then I decided that I was going to add exercise and then I decided the final step that I was going to exercise on an empty stomach. So something that started, let's just eat a little bit healthier, ended up with I'm going to fast, I'm going to eat healthy, I'm going to eat between certain hours, I'm going to exercise and I'm going to exercise on an empty stomach. Well, I lasted three to five days at the time at best. And I still kept going. And every time I slipped back, I was like, oh, because, you know, my husband had problems. Well, now I feel a bit sick. Something else has happened. Oh, I'm really busy at work. So, you know, I'll start again tomorrow or I'll start again next week. No, small changes, big results. And it's the same with business as well. We really need to... Just remember that we need to just start. Start, give yourself the permission to make mistakes, learn from those mistakes, fail fast and fail forward. And that really is the formula to success. And there are a million coaches that will teach you a million different ways to make your first million pounds or euros. And you could go and look at all these different methods but again, you need to think about which coach is the right coach for me and which method is the right method for me. As my life and a business coach, Alina Grayson says, your best business strategy is your energy. It's your energy. When you do the things that feel good to you, when you are in alignment with your actions, with your purpose, with your goals, when it fires up your soul, that is your best business strategy. Not what that coach is doing, not what that friend is doing, not what that neighbor is doing. It may be working for them, but again, you're trying to put on somebody else's shoes. And it's just the way society is at the moment. I feel that we are so far removed from our inner wisdom, from nature, from all things natural, from our intuition. We are told to look for the answers everywhere else but here and here. 
we're listening to other people to other things but it's going inwards and that is where you will find that health wealth happiness is just really going inwards and that's why i love my weight loss program so much because i don't tell you exactly what to eat and how to exercise although i do have recipe books and i do have a couple of exercises that i have filmed with uh, fitness uh, instructors because i'm not a fitness instructor myself so i do give you those tools but my main focus is on the mindset on the psychology and this way your weight loss journey or your you know personal development journey will unfold the way it's meant to unfold for you and i have clients that are doing my weight loss program at the moment and some of them are going through really fast others are going really quite slow in comparison and then some people are going back to the same lectures and re-listening but what they're doing is they're doing it in their own time at their own pace and they're all paying attention to different things but to things that are important to them i do have people in my programs that really focus on eating and exercising and then i have people that are laser focused on beating their food addiction so their focus is on i've got this uh, protocol for um uh, for clearing your gut health basically it's like a gut detox so they can fight their physical addiction to food and excess uh, food and sugar and then i have people that really struggle with emotional eating so they're going back and doing that work so there's something for everyone but everybody gets to focus on what you know their particular journey is and i also believe because i know for myself that all these mindset strategies that i talk about they basically apply to all areas in your life whether it's health weight loss business personal life and my transformation of course started you know with my physical transformation with losing 38 kilos six pounds in weight but it changed my personal life it changed my business because i quickly realized that our best and most powerful tool is the tool that we have here between our eyes that's the best doctor that's the best business strategy it's what we've got here is our it's our mind and that is how you're going to succeed so it's really listening to ourselves so that's the message that i wanted to share today and uh, i was going to say something else i'll talk about the photograph experiment that i shared in the other video but yeah i just hope this message does land because it's just through learning you know through taking those steps and not waiting for the right time and for the right circumstances we just go and then we try to listen to ourselves what is going to work for me my personality my lifestyle my budget what can i do long term because really you know success is consistency really believing in yourself being brave to take those steps and then being consistent in your actions and the example um quick business example and then a photograph experiment so the business example that i can give is when i was invited to do my first live presentation in front of a real audience and that was in London with Santa Banga. If Santa is watching this, then thank you, I appreciate you. And what an amazing opportunity that was at the time. And I prepared this PowerPoint presentation and I kept rehearsing at home. I must have changed the PowerPoint like 100 times. And I practiced the presentation four to five times. I thought it was polished, it was perfect. How wrong was I? <laughs> you know perfect in your head and perfect in your empty little office with no people there is something completely different to perfect out in the real world so the first presentation went reasonably well and then i did the other three i believe i keep forgetting three or four baby brain via zoom because santa and leo the travel to different towns but i did it via zoom and then on one of them i couldn't be on the big screen i was on the little screen and basically you know it was a nearly two hour uh, presentation it was very long and it was quite complicated 
and I remember Santa leaving me the first voice message. She said, I love you, your information is like off the charts, it's high quality, it's amazing, but it's too much, it's too long, it's too complicated, just like needs to be a bit more simple, a little bit less of it. And she said, out of that presentation, you could make three, four more presentations, just simplify it. So then I did it again. And actually, after each time I did the presentation, I changed it that very night. So the last presentation was 35 minutes. So I went from like two hours and I don't know, 20 slides to like five slides and 35 minutes. And the message Santa left me, she just said, wow, wow, wow. But it's only through action, through going through the steps. Okay, it's too long, it was too complicated. What worked, what didn't work? You learn from it and you go again. And that is the best way. And I have some friends, other coaches that are thinking about masterclasses and they're just thinking about it. Will I do this? Will I do that? One day, two days, how long? Just go. You've got an idea, launch it, go. After you have done it, you will know. Was it right for my people? Was it right for me? Can I see myself doing that or will I change it again? Just go. You don't have to be perfect or great to start, but you do have to start to get to that point. And then what I want to end with the experiment that they did uh, with two groups of people that were competing against each other for the best photograph. So it was a best photograph competition. So they basically at the end of the week handed in one pho photograph for this contest and the best photograph was going to win. The difference was that they were given different ways or different strategies of getting there. The first group didn't take any photographs until the last day and they basically could take one and one photograph only to then put into the competition. So what they did during the week is that they did a lot of research, they did a lot of thinking and analyzing. What kind of photographs are best? You know, is it portraits? Is it nature? Is it animals? Is it morning? Is it evening? What, what season is it? And so on and so on to finally decide, right, this was going to be the season, the, the, the time of the day, person or object, and then they went. In contrast, the other group, all they did all day long is just go out and take hundreds and hundreds of photographs all day long. And then at the end of the week, they just had to pick one photograph that was going to enter the contest. So that was practice. So theory versus practice. How do, which team do you think won in this contest? Comment one for the team that were analyzing and doing all the theory and research and comment two if you think it was the action takers. It was people that were just out there practicing. I'll see if anybody puts a comment. I love this experiment and it's only one of so many, but this is the one that is close to my heart. So it was the second group, of course, that won because through practice, they were able to produce a better photograph, not through theory. So it's only through doing. So no matter what goals you may have in your personal life or personal growth and development, for health and weight loss, for your business, you're not gonna find which coach, which mentor, which program, which diet, which exercise is for you in theory. You're only going to find out through practice if you take those steps. And then my suggestion is when you take those steps and those steps are messy, because it doesn't work, you realize it's not for you. Instead of quitting and having this mentality, I'm going to come back to this when the circumstances are right, when the timing is right, think, how can I change this? If this doesn't work, what would work? What can I do instead? 
and trust me that approach will serve you way better so that's the that's the message i want to leave with you today i shall love you and leave you now if you found this video useful please give it a heart so i can see what kind of content people enjoy watching the most if you're interested in my weight loss program or any other master classes uh, workshops that i have they're all in my on my website in my bio that actually are available 24 7 so you can just make the purchase and download um download the product voila the wonders of uh, technology when it's brilliant when it works when it comes to my weight loss program you get one-to-one -one support with me so you get the lectures you get the homework and then we go through this journey together at your speed your pace and we concentrate on on your personal journey where do we need to change things for you and to make it work for you so you get personal support uh, with me for the program but the others are basically like lecture type you just download the worksheet and the lecture if you've got any questions about anything uh, my inbox is always open just message me if you think any of your friends would benefit from hearing this then please tag them or send them a link to this video i always say sharing is caring so i love you and leave you for now have a fantastic afternoon i'll see you again soon be healthy be happy be you bye for now